Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Saturday morning, still prior to noon here along the West Coast, about 11.45 a.m. on this Saturday morning, March 11th, 2023. And uh, cold and rainy outside, pick, picking up some more rain here in California overnight and today and over the next week or so. A whole bunch in the forecast. The latest, a 2.3. Earthquake along the Mediterranean region. Also some activity ramping up into the Turkey area as well. I see a four-pointer coming in right around the Turkey area. All right, let's go ahead and check out some specifics here first. With the volcano activity up into the Aleutian Islands, notice that uh, both of these volcanoes still sitting at a orange and watch level. <clears throat> um, Tanaga and the uh, Takawanga volcano both observing some heightened earthquake activity uh, it looks as though they did list a live seismograph station uh, within this area let me see if i can bring it up here for the uh, takawanga volcano there it is the latest webby quarter graph that's about as big as it's going to get here uh, that's, a, that's a lot of earthquake activity here folks uh, a lot more i think than what's being shown on the uh, USGS site. This is the last 24 hours of earthquake activity. Got to remember every single one of these spikes here are uh, indeed an earthquake. So easily over a hundred, couple hundred earthquakes or so listed up on this map. And that's at the specific volcano here, uh, the Takawanga volcano and the Tanaga volcano area. USGS showing a portion of those, about 146 earthquakes over the last 24 hours. And um, still the depths are all over the place. Uh, I believe this is definitely magma rising to the surface or migrating underground here, uh, getting ready to uh, create some some interesting conditions out here. I'm still a little uncertain as to which volcano uh, will be the one to erupt or maybe they both will. We are getting a little sign of migration over here to the east with a couple earthquakes uh, near the uh, Gusty Bay area within the last hour. Still consistent, though, with magma levels uh, around 4 to 6 kilometers below the surface. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that migration, see where that's headed towards. Uh, but also some further activity up north uh, with this movement. It's a little bit deeper, down there around 9 kilometers or so below the surface. So this whole area is um, definitely noteworthy to watch. Uh, with this ongoing earthquake swarm there at the uh, volcanoes. Now, over the last seven days of earthquake activity here, we're getting up there. Uh, I think by the time tonight rolls around for the update, we'll be over that 1,000 earthquakes within the last week uh, at this specific area with these two volcanoes here. Uh, quite, uh, quite interesting. So we'll continue to watch that, see how it plays out. Uh, no further update yet. yet. Excuse me from the um, USGS with regards to the uh, volcano activity. Uh, I did see, wait, hold on, I wanna go over here to this other map. There we go. Uh, we did note this last night during the update, um, the Alaskan Volcano Observatory's latest report there from yesterday. So nothing's changed, nothing new today so far in terms of any uh, changes there at the volcano. It's not erupting, but it's getting close, I think. All right, uh, what else we have here across the northern end of the Pacific Plate? Looks relatively quiet for the most part. Um, a couple small earthquakes and general microquake movement across the area of um, the Alaska region. I'm just going to look here on the EMSC model. I don't see anything out of the norm here. Some of those earthquakes shown up there on the globe. Not all of them. We don't want to clutter it too much, but uh, a good portion of them. And let's see what we got for the Western Pacific here. As we zoom in across this area, uh, one earthquake near the uh, San Jose Village, the Northern Mariana Islands area. Seen a 4.6, some relatively shallow earthquake movement down here. And prior to that, it uh, looks like a little bit of activity over around the Philippines ramping up again. That one's deep, though. Look at that. 506 kilometers deep into the Philippine Trench. We'll watch for some further surface earthquake activity upstream with all this deep movement taking place here. That's a, that's a goodness, that's a deep one. Looks like uh, 
Looks as though we got a 3.7 here around the um, Philippine, Philippines coming in already. And let me see here. That deeper movement quake was late last night, but it looks as though we're still seeing a, a little bit of uptick further south of this region uh, in the white circles there. Some fours and threes kicking off this morning uh, time period. Uh, so that adjustment looks like it is moving to the south, potentially going to ramp its way up here around the Java Trench area. Of course, yesterday we did see that earthquake coming in here to the northern end of the Java Trench with that 5.3 late last night. Still waiting, though, uh, for some further large-scale movement uh, up around the bend here in this area. All right, what else we got? 4.7 coming in to... See exactly where that's at up here. It looks like uh, Eastern Afghanistan. That one coming in uh, just a couple hours ago, 10 kilometers deep, relatively shallow for that 4.7. And over here around the Turkey area, of course, there's a lot more kicking up here besides uh, the two earthquakes here within the region. By the way, Romania getting in on some further earthquake activity up there with a 4.1 early this morning. And there is some smaller quake activity around Turkey. Uh, USGS only showing there on the map uh, 4.0 and above. But here uh, on the globe, it's showing EMSC model activity. And there's quite a few twos and threes across the area today. Uh, mostly twos scattered across the Mediterranean. And over here around the uh, Canary Islands, did see a little bit of activity kicking up here into the Atlantic Ocean overnight with a 4.8 out into that fracture zone. That's going to be down here in the mid-Atlantic Ridge area. The Ascension Island Ascension Fracture Zone out here. This is basically a, a crack in the eggshell, if you will. Well, technically all of these are just cracks in the uh, eggshell from a, a plate tectonic perspective. But uh, this is a, a divergent boundary out here near the Georgetown region, separation of the seafloor. Uh, you can see these ridges out here. And it, it takes a little while for it to happen, but, uh, you know, this is basically making new land out here. Or... or um, the ocean bigger, so to speak. However you want to look at it, either way, divergent boundary, 4.8 coming in, about 6 in the morning. That's about it, though, for the Atlantic Ocean. Um, let's see what we got here for South America. Looks pretty active up and down the board from about Colombia south into the Chile area. Uh, now, it looks like a lot of this activity from yesterday, we did see a 4.7 off the coast of Costa Rica, 13 kilometers deep. And uh, a little bit of movement looks like into the middle section here of the Peru Chile Trench, somewhat deep uh, overnight. Prior to that, all this activity down south here from yesterday. But either way, heightened movement across the South America region and the Caribbean plate in general. We'll keep an eye on that for some further large scale activity. We just really haven't seen anything large scale, but uh, it's been broad and moderate. Uh, mostly uh, microquakes across the Puerto Rico area. One earthquake after midnight, 3.4 up around the Puerto Rico Trench. Uh, aside from that, most of those from yesterday up here into the States. Got one earthquake up here in the beautiful state of Kentucky. 2.2 near the Vanceburg area, 16 kilometers deep. But on the northern edge here of the um, uh, Appalachian Mountains here. Don't really see too much activity up here, but it does pop up on occasion. Over here around the uh, Southern Plains and West Texas area, uh, I believe these here from last night. Actually, we did have one more kicking up here, 2.2 uh, in the Western Oklahoma area, well south of Woodward. And uh, let's see, nothing big, just somewhat of a deep earthquake, 12 kilometers deep for a 2.2. And let's see if it's been reviewed or not. Hello, there we go. Uh, automatic status. So it has not been reviewed. I was going to say, that's a little deep on the earthquake um, level there. We'll see if um, a seismologist gets to it or not. But either way, some activity there in western Oklahoma. Movement in Colorado from last night. Um, the Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet. All this activity here from yesterday. Uh, and into the northern California area. One earthquake here from yesterday as well 3.4 really haven't seen too much movement kicking up here in northern cal a uh, little bit of activity down here along the northern end of the san andreas fault near fort bragg very shallow earthquake it looks like a 0.2 a 
right smack dab on the San Andreas Fault, Southern California. Um, goodness, not a whole lot. Just a couple small microquakes across the area. Nothing uh, too big. It looks like we did have, just after midnight, a little 2.6 near the Alcatello Wells area. That's off the Elsinore Fault System. But aside from that, uh, West Coast has kind of been in the squeeze zone, so to speak, between uh, activity up here at the northern end of the Pacific Plate and all the movement down south here. So just a matter of time before that uh, makes some adjustment. It's going to have to. Uh, that's a fact. It's going to have to. Can't delay it. I mean, you can delay it, but you can't uh, prevent it. 11, 11 earthquakes out on the big island. Nothing major going on. We'll see around the uh, southeastern area here of the Pahala and the Helena Slump region. All right, uh, further down south into the Fiji area. Looks like we're getting some very shallow earthquake activity up here. Uh, north of Fiji, we have seen quite a bit of deeper movement activity here. In days prior, into the Tonga Trench, adding strain and stress within these regions due to the westward plate movement and the general plate movement here. Scoots this whole area to the northwest along with the Australia plate here. So continue to watch that region of um, the area. The latest quake shows a 4.2 into the Solomon Islands region. Let's see what we got down here in New Zealand. I'm not really seeing too much here on the map, but USGS, well, there we go. Speak it into existence. I've just seen a 3.3 pop up here into the... Um, area outside of Wellington it looks like near the Cook Strait so on that let's go ahead and see what we got there at GeoNet let's see here 16 minutes ago 22 minutes ago I'm looking for that 3.3 uh, that just came in I'm not seeing it though unless it's uh Unless they haven't got to it yet. It's very possible they may not have got to it. There it is, 3.3 .3 an hour ago. But since then, look, it's been uh, some twos and even a 4.2 up along the Kermadec Trench, 300 kilometers deep. Um, a little bit of activity kicking up here today in New Zealand. Nothing doesn't look like nothing major. Not seeing any swarming activity. Just so some uh, broad movement, small scale out there. Uh, let's see what we got here for the uh, volcanic drums. That is going to be the... Uh, which one is that? That kind of kicked up pretty nicely here across. Kind of looks like it's centered right around the... It's not Taupo Super Volcano. It looks like it's just to the... A uh, little bit to the south. I'm not for sure which one, which earthquake that is. That kicked up here um, ooh, a good 10 hours or so ago. wonder which one that was. Let's see here. Earthquakes. That looks like it may have been that 4.4 uh, that down here in the Wellington area. Looks as though we had a a couple, 4.4, 4.4 there, uh, different timestamps, and uh, you know, definitely almost looks like that is indeed correct by looking at the volcanic drums. Uh, quick glance here at the earthquake drums. See what we got in this specific area around the Wellington. Yeah, two earthquakes, two specific earthquakes there within minutes of each other. Um, two four-pointers, identical on the map as well. Following that activity, looks like a little bit of small adjustment, but it uh, doesn't look like that's kicked off any swarming activity uh, in the area. But that's rather interesting, two earthquakes back to back like that. Alrighty, uh, let's see what else we have here. I think that's about it for um, earthquake activity. We'll continue to watch that. Uh, definitely looks active today, huh? Quite a bit. Quite a bit up and down the board, though. There's still a couple areas that are, you know, obviously waiting for some large-scale movement, and who knows when it's going to happen. Uh, just a matter of time. The Kurokam Chaka Trench, uh, this area up here around the 
a Jabba Trench northward. Of course, the West Coast is always under the gun. Uh, it's been somewhat quiet there recently um, in terms of any type of moderate activity for a major plate boundary. All right, space weather activity. Let me jump over here to the solarham.net website. And uh, thanks for everyone uh, supporting out there for Kevin running the Solarham site. It's a very useful site that uh, he runs out here, and it's good to see some supporters helping him out with his goal uh, to continue running this page. Solar activity uh, is downgraded there. It looks like 95% chance for a C flare, M flare at 15, X flare at 1. I really don't see any threat of any type of flaring at all. Looking at the last 24 hours here on the map, uh, it just shows a little bit of low-grade sea flare activity, but that's about it. Nothing major popping off. And a look at these sunspots here shows us um, that, uh, well, there's this little region here. It looks like it may be growing slightly, uh, but all these other uh, regional sunspots that are facing these, the Earth, are, um, they're dying. So fa farewell. See you guys maybe next time. But uh, there's not a whole lot left behind here either on the eastern limb of the sun as far as potential goes. So we'll just uh, have to see how it plays out. Don't let your guard down though. These things can ramp up in a blink of an eye. Um, that's for certain. And uh, also, Kevin, I, I got a habit of always clicking the back button here. If I Say, for example, if I go to... This image and look at it. Always click the black, the back button, and um, same for any image up here. Always click the back button, but that just does it. Click the solar ham, and voila, it clicks back. Okay, <laughs> Kevin kind of mentioned that in an email to me. Watches the videos here on the channel, and uh, he says uh, I'm always clicking the back button. Just click the solar ham button instead, and it takes me right back to the home page. Alrighty, I got it. Just got to program that into my brain and, uh, and make that work. All right. So for space weather, yeah, pretty calm, folks. There's not a whole lot of going, not a whole lot going on up here at the higher latitudes. The weather activity along the west coast is, um, well, it's wet. That's for sure. We got more rain coming in to Northern California and the west coast over the next week or so. Uh, as I put this into motion, you can just see storm system after storm system coming in. And this one right here has kind of changed up a little bit. It looks like the brunt of this uh, massive moisture flow, or atmospheric river, if you want to call it that, uh, is going to be aimed at the Bay Area southward. Uh, us here in Northern California is still going to be uh, fairly wet, but it doesn't look like as wet as uh, was forecasted. But goodness, Southern Cal, Sierra Nevada is getting uh, quite a bit of uh, moisture funneling in there and behind that looks like the pattern appears to stay wet and unsettled up until kind of looks like about the last week of March now this is way out there sometimes these models can be uh, wrong but uh, it looks as though high pressure here in the orange lines or red lines um, is gonna start taking over the uh, west coast area so that could be good news if people are looking for a little dry spell and maybe some warmer temperatures here towards April. We'll definitely keep an eye on that and of course uh, provide updates as um, things evolve. All right folks until then have a uh, have a good one. We'll catch you guys a little bit later tonight. Yeah that's what, that's what I was trying to say. I'm almost healed as far as um, being back to normal. I'm still feeling a little bit of uh, a little bit of fever kicking on trying to shake it but it's kind of it's a little hard all right folks um have a good one uh, i know we forgot to cover the middle america trend well costa rica did have some activity but there's a swarm of threes kicking up here on the map um you know i think we can obviously obviously see where our hot spots are today uh, in a couple different swarming location regions and uh, we'll just continue to keep an eye on areas that really have not been hit uh, the west coast is just lacking activity and um we'll see how it plays out folks could be one of those days we'll catch you guys a little bit later on have a good one